What's up YouTube, it's your girl Leah and I'm back with another video. Right now, I'm about to go ahead and door dash for my morning shift, which is 8.30 to 10. Then I got an hour break and then I'm supposed to head out again 11 to 3. We'll see how that goes. I might go through the girls' toys because I still have my Christmas tree up and their Christmas presents underneath, but I'm not letting them open anything until I go through their old toys for the second time. I thought I did damage the first time and I didn't, but this time I'm definitely going to thoroughly go through it. And then y'all know how I do. I uh, go to Once Upon a Child to sell them. And if they don't sell, I'll take them to a DAV. I'm going to go ahead and start eating breakfast. And I got about five minutes until my dash starts. So stay tuned. McDonald's I mean, iced coffees are like hit or miss. Excuse me. Most of the time they miss though. So I'm sitting in the car and I'm just, just sitting here. The orders are shitty. And I was just thinking, I was like, when I be having chit chat videos, I'm gonna just start calling it bandana business. That's corny, but I think it clicks. I don't know if I'm gonna say that for real. Yeah, I don't know. I'm back at home. I only dashed for, I think, 43 minutes. And I only made $6.50, so sad. I go back out at 11 o'clock. We'll see how that one goes. And I'm about to go in this house and go through the toys in the playroom and then make my way up to their rooms. I don't know if I'm gonna put that in there or not. Like a video of me doing that, I might. It's a lot of toys I gotta go through. I don't know why I'm sleepy. They didn't put a lot of stuff in here. So they, most of these toys must be upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube so I did my second dash and it was a very productive dash but I thought I was gonna go get my daughter from daycare well my daughter's from daycare but come to find out I don't and I ended up ending my dash and they don't have any more dashes until later on this evening like around 5 30 so I don't know if I'm gonna step out again or not I'm not sure but it was a very productive lunch time I'm gonna talk about bandana business <laughs> I recently tried to work at Whole Foods as an in-store shopper. I'm gonna tell you guys about that experience, what happened my first day, all that stuff, me applying and all that. So the first thing I did, of course, was apply. I applied online at wholefoods.com or whatever. And since I liked it, the Walmart position, I thought that I was gonna like the Whole Foods position, which is, they're similar, but they're different. They have their differences or whatever. And I'm gonna make a video of the similarities and differences in another video to compare the two. You guys probably know Whole Foods is a very healthy eating company brand, whatever it's called. They have organic and then they have, I think it's called conventional type foods. I'm just dabbling. So me applying, I applied online at the Whole Foods website as an in-store shopper. I wanted a part-time job. You guys know that I have a lot of availability issues, but for some reason when I applied for this job, I put that I had open availability. We'll get into that later on. I don't know why I did that, but I also applied at Whole Foods when I applied at Walmart and Sam's Club. So I applied to all these jobs around the same time. I thought I had declined their offer letter or whatever. And apparently I did it. And like I said, I had applied at the other jobs with this one back in September. I was like, let me try again or whatever. So I went to try to apply, but the offer letter was still there. Now this was in December. December, I went to go ahead and accept the offer letter and it went through. I started getting all the onboarding process um, information to my email like background checks i9s all of that stuff i got all that stuff sent to me and also my onboarding videos i guess because of covid they gave everybody the option to decide if they want to do it at home or do it at the store i tried to do my onboarding videos at home but they didn't have my account set up so i had to go to the store everything was so rushed and i don't know if it's because i was supposed to start in september because the start date i think says september 10th but I went and accepted it in December. I get a phone call from the manager. She's excited to have me on board. I was excited, you know, I'm trying to work again. And I was hoping that I didn't put what I put on my availability, which 
stupid me, I put open availability knowing that I don't have that. So she called me, she let me know my schedule for the week. I had to come in the next day from three to nine or something like that. And I was like, I don't know why I said that I could do that knowing that I went through hell to try to find somebody to watch the girls for me. But it happened. So I go in and I really didn't feel good. So me going, I really couldn't pay attention. The videos are boring. I didn't even finish all of my videos. I got a tour of the back end of the store. I really didn't get a tour of the store, which I was gonna be shopping in the front of the store, not the back. But I guess it's good to know what's in the back. And that was pretty much the first day. I had two days before I came in again. And that was my official first day, my first day of shopping. I had to sit for a little bit because I don't know, like I said, everything was kind of unorganized. To me it was, so I had to sit for a little bit um, before my trainer came. She's a nice lady, she's cool. She basically taught me the ropes of the first day. What you do when you first come in is you go and sign in for a walkie and a iPhone. I don't know what iPhone it is, I just know it's an iPhone. Before you do that, I'm sorry, they have you um, sign into a paper time login sheet or whatever, cause you could do it online and you could do it on a time clock online through Workday. Before you do anything, make sure you sign a book, make sure you log in your time before you leave, when you leave, however you wanna do it. You have access to it from your phone or the computer at the store. After you grab the walkie and iPhone, you log in and the orders start coming in. And you better accept an order in a certain amount of time or you will get a phone call. I don't know what happens. They just tell you to answer it and then hang up and make sure you accept the order as soon as you get it. Once you accept the order, you set up your cart. Um, I, I call them a double load cart because they're twice the size of a regular cart. You can put up to, uh, between six to eight paper bags that um, Whole Foods supplies you with. Make sure you got your produce bags. Um, I didn't really use co-liners or the other liners. Uh, I didn't have any ice cream or anything really for my first day. And I think you use your co-liners or something like that when it's only a delivery, which is the Amazon Prime. People, they come pick up the orders and deliver them to the customers. After you stock your, your card up, the way the store I was at was set up was that she told me to always go to produce first and then um, go from produce to the other end of the store, if that makes sense. That's just the way my store was set up. My store, like I was there long, but the store was set up that way. After that, it's a lot. It was a lot for me because I don't know the store, for one. And for two, I don't eat that certain way. And of course, with any new store, over time, you will get to know the setup or what works best for you when you do your shops. So sometimes you gotta go to the deli. Sometimes you gotta go to the processed food. You gotta ask the people in the department. Um, that's the thing too, when you're out of um, a product, you have to go to the associate that works in the department and have them verify that they're out of the product. If they say, we don't have any, you have to scan their barcode or something like that to verify that we don't have any. So I think that would have annoyed me if I stayed longer because I have to stop what I'm doing, interrupt what they're doing. Some That store can get busy. I've never been, that was my first, well not my first time. My first time was when I came in to do the computer videos of being in the store. I didn't know that it was a popular area. Like I said, I don't eat that certain way. And of course it's through Amazon too. So that would have been annoying, you know, but like I said, I'm gonna make a video comparing Walmart's OGP versus Whole Foods in-store shopper. They basically do the same thing, just in different ways. So yeah, that was one of the things. I didn't experience um, packing up anything from a hot bar or the cold bar or anything like that. I don't even know if they do that. Basically, that's the shopping part. So after the shopping part, you have to stage what you shop. Uh, I think it's called Slam or something like that too. I don't know. But like I said, I was only there for one day. Stage what you shop. So you have shelving for the ambient, which is like room temp stuff, baby stuff, you know, the stuff that doesn't go in a freezer or a chiller or which is a refrigerator or whatever. And you got the ambient shelves, the freezers, and then the chiller coolers or refrigerators, whatever you want to call them. So when you're shopping, you label your bags A, F, or C. 
before you get to that staging part because that'll help you out in the long run telling yourself what goes where. So in order to stage that, what you would do is you the phone and it'll ask you how many bags you have. So you put however many bags you have. Now, if you have overstock items like water or sodas that can't fit in a bag, they would get their own stickers. So you would include those as their own individual bags, if that makes sense. So you count how many bags you have, you insert it on the phone. Then you go to this printer machine where you input the number of bags you have and it'll print you out a whole long paper of stickers. And the stickers will have like a random word on it and it'll say one of however many, two of however many, and it goes on until however many bags you have. So for example, if you have seven bags, you will put seven in the printer, hit enter, and say the code word is cat. So it'll say cat one of seven bags, cat two of seven bags, you know, stuff like that. So when you get that stuff, you um, fold it forward, fold the paper bags forward, stick the sticker up there, and then you're you're good. After that, after you put the stickers on the brown paper bags, Amazon has already inserted codes to help you stage it. So you'll scan the, the, the barcodes that are on the, not barcodes, they're QR codes. You'll scan those and then you'll scan, well, first you'll scan where you're staging it. So you'll scan, say it's an ambient bag, you scan the ambient shelf and then you'll scan the bag and then you'll put the bag wherever you scan the location for it. I know I'm random, sorry. And of course, you gotta make sure you pay attention to whether it's a delivery or it's a pickup order. Because if it's a pickup order, you have to put it in the pickup area. And if it's a delivery, you have to put it in the delivery area. After you stage your stuff, you go right back to shopping again. And even when you're shopping, sometimes they will pause you in the middle of your shop, make you come back and put what you have and stage that. And I think it's called interrupted shops or something like that. You would scan your, your QR codes on the bag and then you will put it on a shelf. They might assign you that order again or they might give it to someone else. So if there's an issue going on with the order or the phone didn't take something that you picked up, make sure you write um, a note on one of those little sticker things from the printer and stick it with that order so you can let the next person know, hey, um, I picked this for you, but it, I don't think the phone scanned it. So then they would know. Um, so yeah. They will legit, you go out, pick one item up that's way across the store, they'll stop you and tell you, pick it um, to put the stuff in an interrupted shelf. And they will want you to um, dispense, which is not the Whole Foods term. I don't know what it's called. That might be the slam part. I don't know. You take whatever order that they're looking for or whatever order's there, you basically put into a shopping cart and you take it to that customer. So it's not your interrupted order that you're taking to the customer. This is an order that's already been staged that you're bringing out to the customer. So like I said, when I make the comparison of Walmart and Whole Foods, you guys will kind of get an idea of what exactly I'm talking about. Once you uh, dispense that order or take the order out to the customer, you put it in their trunk, of course, verify their name. If they have alcohol, of course, you're supposed to verify an ID as well. And then you go back inside. So like I said, they might give you that interrupted order again, or they might give you a whole nother order So to start on. So at Whole Foods, you do everything on your own. And it's hard when you don't know the store and it's hard when you're out of product. And sometimes you have to finesse the system when it comes to weighing produce or doing substitution. Oh, substitution is another thing. They do substitutions crazy weird. I don't even grasp the task of it because like it's so weird. Like on the videos, they tell you how to substitute. You might want to go with the brand first or the number or the flavor. I don't know. But they give you options to pick from for a substitution. And produce is weird because you might get an organic fresh fruit and they might substitute it with an organic packaged fruit. And then you have to figure out the price and difference and all that. Yeah, that kind of would have made me mad too. Yeah, so if you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them because I know it's kind of hard to follow, but 
I was only there for a day. And the reason is because like I stated before, when I applied, I didn't remember it was two months later where they tried to contact me. I didn't remember what I put for my availability. I even went on my application and it didn't show me what I put. I talked to the manager, you know, for an availability change from my 8.30 to 2.30, which I really need. And she said she will work with me, but I wouldn't get the hours or the days that I might be looking forward to, which it really don't matter to me. I could work two days as long as it's within my 8.30 to 2.30, you know, something. And she, you know, she said she would do it, but you know, when a, the way a person talks to you, um, it's like, a, yeah, I'll do it, but I don't want to do it. That's the vibe I got. And that's my fault because on the availability form or when I did the application, I had put open availability. And that was really my fault. Like I stressed that out to her. I was like, look, that was completely my fault. I didn't know what I put. It was like two months ago when I did the application. So yeah, that was completely my fault. So I had uh, resigned on spot because I didn't want another thing with like what happened with Walmart. So now I'm back to dashing again. Still hit or miss. It's so hard to try to find a job within my availability. And I'm gonna try and look and see if I can find anything overnight, but everybody wants that mid shift job wise. And that's a lot of shifts that people can't really take. And I really can't take a mid shift. I really need an 8.30 to 2.30 or overnight when the kids are somewhere sound asleep taken care of while I can work. And at Whole Foods, I probably wouldn't have been there long anyways, not even because of my past history with a few jobs but it's just it's a lot it's it's a lot like i said when you don't go there all the time and they have a lot of different things going on um but i would knock it i mean I was actually hired through Whole Foods versus Amazon because I've been seeing a lot of people talking about um, being an Amazon Prime shopper. I actually was signed up for one, but I removed myself from the platform because I had started working at the post office that I didn't stay long. So I don't even know if I could ever go back on the Amazon Prime shopper platform as a driver. I want us to be a driver. Pick the stuff up and take it. If you have any questions, let me know. If I missed something, I probably did. Like I said, I was only there a day. That's my Whole Foods in-store shopper experience. And make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching. Oh, and I, I forgot to mention, I think it was a sign for me to leave too because my daughter, um, literally the next day after I had quit, because I didn't have to go to work until two days after that if I decided to stay. Um, but yeah my daughter got exposed to covid at school so that put her out for five days so i would have been screwed either way because i would have been put out of work like that but all right bye y'all